Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShock.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today we're going to talk about the 555 timer in a stable mode. This is the fourth electronic block tutorial for my electronics learning board. Uh, this block will be a very important block in our learning board. What this will do is it will create square wave pulses. We will be able to adjust that frequency. We will talk about how to determine that frequency. Uh, and we'll talk about how to hook it up. And after we're done doing that, I'm going to show, you, show it to you on a breadboard so that you understand exactly what's going on. So the 555 timer, the NE555, has uh, eight pins. We'll be working with the DIP, the DIP version, dual inline package that plugs directly onto a breadboard. Um, the first pin is on the lower left. There's a notch here to denote the left-hand side. Lower left is pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So pin 1 is our supply ground, our DC ground. Pin 2 is our trigger pin. Pin 3 is our output pin. Pin 4 is our reset pin. Pin 5, control. Pin 6, discharge. Pin 7, threshold. And 8, pin 8 is our VCC, which is our power supply, uh, our power supply line. So what we're going to do is piece by piece go through the requirements for setting the circuit up so that it will create square wave pulses for us. And we can use that for uh, to trigger many things. We can ha just have it blink an LED. We can have it turn on a relay if we want to. In this case, we're just going to blink an LED. But I want you to understand how this block works uh, so that when you actually, if you when you see our electronics learning board, which is actually up for pre-sale, link below, um, that you understand the theory behind this specific block. Anyhow, let's... Uh, Let's talk about our power supply lines. Here's our power supply. Uh, this is a, sch a schematic symbol for a battery. Uh, in this case, our battery is rated for 5 volts. The longer uh, bar is our positive. The shorter bar is our negative. This is our ground reference point, an upside down triangle. And as you can see, it's connected to our pin 1 ground. This is a reference point. Anywhere where you see this in a schematic, is connected. So imagine a wire from here to here. This is our VCC, our power supply of 5 volts. Anywhere where you see this VCC notation, you know it's connected internally. This is just a schematic reference. So here, imagine a wire connected here. So once, we had, once we've done that, our, our 555 timer has power applied to it. It can't do anything, but it is powered up. Next, what we have to do is we have to connect our trigger pin to our threshold pin, and we're also going to put a uh, a, cap a capacitor on pin 5 and ground to ground because that will help the operation of the 555 timer in a stable mode. As you can see, pin 5 is connected to a 10 nanofarad ceramic capacitor to ground. That will improve our uh, the operation more, more at high frequencies when we have a high frequency output. Um, but at low frequencies, it won't make much of a difference. It's always good practice to, to add that capacitor uh, to your circuit, but it's not mandatory, especially low frequencies. As you can see, I've connected my trigger pin, pin 2, to pin 6, my threshold pin. And next, what we have to do is we have to tie pin 4, our reset pin, to 5 volts. If, that's tied, if the reset pin is tied to ground, the output is disabled. If it's tied to the 5 volt line or to our BCC line, whatever voltage that is, uh, then the 555 timer will be enabled. So we have to tie this to VCC, and then what we're going to do is we're going to put a uh, we're going to put a, an indicator on our output. We're going to put a, a an LED, a light emitting diode, and a current limiting resistor on the output, so we can actually see it pulsing on and off at low frequencies. Pin four is now tied to VCC. That's our reset pin. Our chip is now enabled. It still can't do anything because we haven't we haven't uh, chosen what frequency we're going to use yet. We need a couple extra components for that. But as you can see, pin three, our output pin, is connected to a 3990 ohm resistor. Really, it can be between 390 and 680. In this case, in the case of your VCC being nine volts, you could actually put a 1k ohm resistor there if you wanted. That's limiting current to our diode, uh, our our LED. Now this is our LED. The longer pin is your positive, your anode. The shorter pin, this is the schematic notation for it, the shorter pin is your negative, your cathode, uh, and it's connected to the ground line. So your VCC, uh, your power supply is connected here, here, and here. Your DC ground from your power supply is connected here, to here, to here, to here. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now what we have to do is we have to determine our, uh, our, our, our RC network. And... 
our RC network will determine the output frequency. It will actually determine a lot of things. It will determine duty cycle, time high, time low. Uh, we're actually not going to get into time high, time low, and duty cycle. We're, we just want to pulse this on and off. But there are there's a lot more to say about this chip. However, we need two resistors and one capacitor. Let's call them RA, RB, and C. And after we actually hook up the final circuit, we this, this final network, what we'll do is we'll go through a table determining how to, to calculate out our frequencies. Okay, so as you can see, RA and RB and C don't have values yet. Those are to be determined. We've got our VCC line connected to one side of RA. The second side of RA is connected to the first pin of RB. And the second pin of RB is connected to the positive side of, in this case, an electrolytic capacitor. Uh, which is polarized, has a positive and a negative. Um, you don't have to use uh, a pol uh, an electrolytic capacitor. I'm using this because we'll likely be using uh, larger capacitors for our circuit so we can actually have really low frequencies um, as opposed to capacitors like 10 nanofarads which would actually give us uh, larger frequencies depending, also depending on RA and RB. Anyway, I digress. How do we connect this to our circuit? Between RA in RB, we connect our discharge line, pin 7. Between RB and C, we connect it to pin 6, which is our threshold pin. So, what I'll actually do here, which is already connected to our trigger pin. So our trigger pin is connected to pin 6, uh, which is our threshold pin. It's also connected to the network between RB and C. And our circuit is complete. This, once powered up, will flash our LED based on whatever frequency it is. Uh, it's, it's set for. Now if it's a higher frequency, a much higher frequency, the LED will just look like it's on because the human eye can't pick up on higher frequency ranges. But if you use an oscilloscope right here, you'll be able to see whatever frequency you've actually set it at. Now one thing to note, the 555 timer is an RC-based oscillator, therefore it is not accurate. Uh, typically resistors have a tolerance of about 5%. You can get 1% tolerance, uh, I believe even lower. Capacitors are much worse, they typically have a 10% tolerance. So if you have your output set for 100 hertz and you see 100 and 510 hertz or 90 hertz, don't be surprised. It's based on the accuracy, uh, or sorry, the tolerance of your three timing components. Anyhow, put this together, but first of all, let's go through a table uh, and we'll determine some frequencies. Our calculation for frequency is 1.44 divided by 2 times RB plus RA and then I'd take that value multiply it by C. So how I would make this calculation is I would take 2 times RB, add that to RA, the value, then I would take that value and multiply it by our capacitor value. Once I have that, I would take, uh, I would have, record that value, 1.44 divided by that. Now if I had a calculator, it, wouldn't, it would be much easier. Um, obviously, bedmiss would be involved. Uh, so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to do a few examples. Now what I have here is a table, our A, our B, C, uh, and the, uh, basically the decimal equivalent of our capacitor. You'll see what I mean in a minute, and our output frequency. So in the case of our A, 10K, K is 1,000, 10,000 ohms, our B as well, 10K. Um, and let's have a 10 micro farad electrolytic capacitor receipt. So 10 micro is equivalent of 0 0.00001. Now, if you don't if you're not familiar with these notations, then uh, I have another video that I'll also be linking below so that you can understand what 10 micro means or 10 nano, 100 milli, 10k, you'll understand that. 10 micro equals 0 0.00001. So we would multiply. So to do this calculation, we would first do 2 times RB which would be 2 times 10k is 20k, so 20,000 plus 10,000. Multiply that, that total by 
0 0.00001, record that value, and then take 1.44 and divide it by that total value. That will give us our output frequency, and our output frequency is basically a value that will determine how, how often the output is pulsed. So we'll actually see that in a few minutes when we do a lab, but pause it now, try to do this calculation, see if you match what I get for your output frequency. I'm hoping you got 4.8. Uh, frequency is measured in hertz. Uh, this means that the output will go from high to low 4.8 times a second. Uh, if we had the, an output of 1 kilohertz, 1 kHz, that would mean that the output would turn on and off 1,000 times a second. 100 hertz means the output goes on and off 100 times a second. Anyhow, let's try another example. Let's try 50k, 50k, and 100 micro, which equates to 0 0.0001. Pause it now, try to find the uh, output frequency. Hopefully you got 0 0.096 hertz as well. Now what that means is that if you actually take the reciprocal of this number, take 1 and divide it by this, that's reciprocal, you'll know that basically every 10.41 seconds the output will go from high to low one time. So uh, that was a bit of a harder example. Let's do a higher frequency. Uh, let's do a higher frequency example. Let's do 1K, 1K, and let's do 0 0.1 micro, which equates to 0 0.0000001. So 0 0.0000001. So multiply um, uh, 2K, 2RB is 2K, plus RA is 1K, so that's 3K. Multiply that by 0 0.0000001. Take that and take 1.44 divided by your, your, your total, and that will be your output frequency. Let's hope we get the same answer. Pause your video. Okay, so I got 4800 hertz, and that equates to 4.8 kilohertz, 4.8 thousand hertz. Um, hopefully you got the same answer. Now we're going to do one more example, and that will be the example that we do on our circuit board in a second. We're going to put this onto a breadboard, the exact circuit talked about above, and uh, and, and we're going to plug it into a circuit board. So let's go back to our schematic. Okay, RA, 10K. RB, 10K, 10,000. And our capacitor is 10 micros, 0 0.00001 uh, farads. Our output frequency is 4.8 hertz. Use the formula I talked about before to make sure that I'm right. I might be wrong. I haven't double checked. You double check for me. 2 times RB is... 20k plus 10k is 30k, 30,000. Multiply that by 0 0.00001. Take that total. Take 1.44 divided by my answer, and that should be what you get. So that means that this LED will blink 4.8 times a second. So I'm going to put this on the board, but before I do, and I realize this, this tutorial is going on uh, way longer than uh, I had hoped it would, I still want to teach you one thing. If you want to make uh, a variable oscillator, what you can do is you can use, I mean, it's hard to find tunable capacitors, but what you can do is use potentiometers. Potentiometers have three, uh, three wires, uh, and there's a wiper in the middle. If we use the left, the left wire, or lead, ignore the right, don't connect it to anything. Use the middle, which is the wiper, and connect like this then basically, if you look at it from this perspective, that wiper, when you tune the, the potentiometer, will look at all of the entire, can be tuned to the entire range of the resistor. So, if this was a 10K ohm potentiometer, you could tune to anywhere between 0 and 10K. And you could also manipulate RB. Now, if you want to learn more about the 555 timer, in addition, you want to learn about duty cycle, time high, time low, in this case, it doesn't matter. But this is how you would connect a potentiometer. You would ignore the right pins, use the middle pins as the wiper, and you'd be able to tune them, use it with a little screwdriver, and you'd connect them as such. So that's just an option. Uh, I'm not going to do that today, 
but I'm going to, but on the uh, electronics learning board, this is how we have it set up. Two potentiometers for RA and RB, uh, which allow you to really have a lot of, um, which gives you a lot of allowance relative to frequency adjustment. Okay, finally, let's put this on a breadboard. 10K RB, 10K RA, and 10 micro for C. I've connected a red wire to pin 8, our VCC line, a black wire to our ground line, pin 1, and I will be applying power here. I will be applying 5 volts. I've connected our 5 volt line, our VCC line, to our reset line. I'm pulling reset to, to our power supply voltage so that the chip is enabled. Again, if, that, if the reset line, pin 4, is grounded, the chip will not op operate. It will, the output will be disabled. I've taken a 390 ohm resistor between pin 3 and the positive longer lead of our LED, our anode, and I've connected the shorter lead of the LED, the cathode, to our ground line, which is on pin 1. Next, I'm going to take a 10 nanofarad capacitor, an electrolytic capacitor, place it between pin 5 and ground. There's our capacitor. Next, I'm going to connect our trigger pin, pin 2, to our threshold pin, pin 6. I know it's a little bit blurry. I'm sorry about that. So... Blue is our connection between pin 2 and pin 6. Uh, red is our VCC pin, pin 8 to pin 4 reset. And now what we have to do, all we have left to do is to create our RC network. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the RC network along here and take wires and connect them to the relative pins. Okay, so I've got RA in series with RB in series with RC. But we haven't connected our RA to VCC yet. We haven't connected our the, the, secondary, the negative side of our capacitor ground. So first of all, let's do that. So I've connected uh, RA to this first primary side of RA to uh, VCC and the negative of our capacitor ground. Now I have to connect the area between where uh, RA and RB connect to pin se to pin seven, which is our discharge pin. I'll do that right now. And then what I have to do is make our last connection between where RB meets the positive side of the capacitor to pin 6, which is our threshold pin. Now we power it up and we'll see if it works. Apply 5 volts to your circuit. You can also use 9 volts. So that's pulsing roughly 4.5, uh, 4.8 times a second. So there you have it. So that output is basically 0 and 5 volts. Uh, consider 0 0 volts ground to be a 0, 5 volts to be a 1 in binary, because we'll be using that later. We're going to apply this to a counter circuit. Now, the counter circuit is coming next. I'm going to talk about the 74LS93. Now, if you've watched, been watching these block videos, you might be able to determine soon just how to plug them all together. But that's the whole point of the electronics learning board, so hopefully, I'm hoping that you'll uh, check the link below for the uh, pre-order option. Um, it will come with several peripherals fully assembled and tested. It'll also come with an AC adapter so it's plug and play. Very easy to use. You're going to use all of these upcoming block tutorials and I'm going to make videos for all of the projects so that you uh, and whoever you're working with can, can learn along with me. Anyhow, thank you for watching and sincerely appreciate it. Please keep, uh, keep an eye out for our upcoming block tutorials.